Okay, this is the ceremony for the opening of the Veterans Center. Today is March 16th, 2012. go ahead and uh, start the program this morning and uh, I am uh, Dr. Brian Haynes, Vice President for Student Affairs here at Clayton State University and I have the honor of leading us through uh, this program and uh, a couple of disclaimers as we uh, start the program. Uh, obviously we see pollen flying around so we're going to try to get you out of here uh, and inside as quickly as possible but we really really uh, feel a need to uh, pr uh, allow others to provide a few brief remarks as to the significance of this uh, grand opening today. In 2011, Clayton State University was designated as a veteran-friendly campus, and today we will open the veterans res and today as we open the Veterans Resource Center, we will highlight the major accomplishments that have aided the university in achieving this distinction. Some of the highlights include establishment of the Veterans Task Force in June 2009, the continued evolution and establishment of programs and services for veterans and their families, the establishment of the Student Veteran Association in 2009. Um, I would add that uh, this organization was voted Student Organization of the Year in 2010 here on campus. And finally, today, the opening of the Veterans Resource Center. So as we move forward in the program, I would like to introduce Shiraz Kara, Associate Director of Counseling. And Shiraz has been involved in this initiative from the very beginning. Uh, she tells me this morning that uh, this sort of started when she um, had several individual counseling sessions with students on campus, um, and they expressed um, concern about the lack of uh, such a space and other programs and services here on campus. She's also served as a group facilitator for returning veterans on campus and now chairs our Veterans Task Force. So with that stated, we'll ask Shiraz to come forward and she has a number of introductions and she's going to recognize a number of you out there in the audience this morning. So Shiraz Kara, please come forward. Thank you, Dr. Haynes. First, I'd like to say thank you to our president, Dr. Hines, and the president cabinet for your support, because without this level of support, we, uh, the, the, the VRC uh, would not come into being. I'd also like to thank the Board of Regents for developing the Soldier to Scholars program. This program is a consortium of military-friendly institutions within the University System of Georgia. Uh, Ms. Tanya Lamb, who is with us today, uh, is o oversees this program. She is the Associate Vice Chancellor in the Office for Student Affairs. Someone who's not with us from the VOR today who was instrumental in uh, cultivating and did tremendous work um, for the S2S, the Soldier to Scholars Program, is Patty Filios Laney. She recently left the post, but I think she, she deserves to be recognized for her work. I'd also like to acknowledge the members of the Veterans Task Force. The Veterans Task Force is a cross-campus committee that advocates for student veterans and their needs here on campus. Dr. Roger Bates, if you could raise your hand. Ms. Lou Bedrosian. Ms. Tiffany Robbins, Dr. John Campbell, Dr. Kitty Deering, Dr. Mark May, Ms. Bridget McDonald, Ms. Sandra Starr, Dr. Christy Burton, and our two student members, Dennis Brown and Edwin Starks. I'd also like to say thank you to our two very dependable VRC staff members who are student assistants currently 
and these are Deidre Harrell and Diane Peters. They're standing right back there, very modestly. I'd also like to welcome community guests, and I hope that we will have lasting collaborations with you. We have with us today representatives from the Veterans Administration, from the Vet Center in Atlanta, various military outreach coordinators and center directors from the University System of Georgia. Some of them are members of the S2S program, veterans of foreign wars, disabled American veterans, and Mary Aliori Cares, which is a human resources company that hires veterans, and Veterans Heart. And finally, I'd like to say that my hope is that the VRC will grow and thrive and fulfill its vision and mission. And I'm going to read you the vision and mission from our flyer. Vision, to create a seamless transition into higher education for military service members and their dependents. Mission, the Veterans Resource Center provides service members a welcoming and dedicated venue to assist in adjusting to campus life and achieving academic excellence. The VRC is a place that service members can call their own where they gather in camaraderie and support of each other. Thank you. Thank you once again, Shiraz, for your leadership in this endeavor. It is my distinct privilege to introduce Dr. Thomas J. Hines, Jr., President of Clayton State University. Since his arrival in May 2009, Dr. Hines has led Clayton State University in the development of strategic enrollment management, facilities master planning, and a university-wide strategic planning initiative. During this same period of time, the institution experienced the highest enrollments in the history of Clayton State, as well as the largest number of undergraduate and graduate degrees awarded. The school is home to the 2011 NCAA Women's Division II National Champions. Clayton State University has instructional sites in Henry, Fayette, as well as Clayton County, as well as online degree programs in information science, nursing, integrated studies, and healthcare management. Dr. Hines is also actively involved in the Georgia Humanities Council, serves as a member of the executive committee of the Carol Tomorrow Initiative, and a member of the Clayton County, Fayette County, and Metro Atlanta Chambers of Commerce. He has also been named three times by Atlanta Business Chronicle as one of the leaders in Atlanta education. Let's give our university president, Dr. Hines, a round of applause as he comes forward to deliver the official welcome. Hearing, hearing. I'm, as you all know, I am um, vertically challenged, and so when tall guys are before me, it's, they get to laugh as I look over the microphone. Um, Wendell Ford, uh, who is former senior senator from Kentucky, having been uh, received an, a lavish introduction from uh, a former lieutenant governor of the state of Kentucky, of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, uh, after hearing this introduction, of, observed that he wished his parents had been here today to hear this, because um, his father would have been amused and his mother would have believed it. Um, and um, I, I, I want to say humbly um, that um, things that get done at institutions, while um, some of us um, who have the honor of serving at such institutions get to stand um, on such occasions. Uh, it's the folks who made the plans, established a commitment, had a vision that creates the conditions in which these things can happen. Um, and ranging, for example, from Shiraz's dedication um, to a vision and a commitment to those of our some 400 students who have uh, courageously served our country, uh, a vision that we could do more to help in their success as students uh, by creating opportunities for them to succeed uh, in important ways. It's that kind of vision that allows 
all of us to succeed at an institution. Uh, and it is for that kind of commitment and vision that I am personally grateful. Um, my dad was a, a World War II veteran of, uh, of Guadalcanal and the Solomons. Um, his, uh, his previous education prior to, uh, uh, to the military did not allow him opportunities for full access uh, to the GI Bill passed in 1944. Um, but I think any student of American history would identify that the extraordinary success of this nation in the latter part of the 20th century, and that sets a foundation for continuing success in the 21st century, dates back to the GI Bill, dates back to an understanding that a generation of great Americans would serve as the the, the roots as the foundation for a continuation and, and, and a realization of an American dream in which higher education was indeed the access point to that American dream uh, of opportunity. Um, and so this center is simply one small and continuing part of our contribution to both saying thank you to those who have served uh, bravely and loyally um, in defense of this nation, um, but also as an appreciation that the next generation of leaders, the next generation of the best and brightest of our nation, um, will more likely than not come from the ranks of, 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 of US military and its veterans. And so, this is a small part, a small statement for our institution, but an incredibly important statement in which we say thank you, in which we say this institution is here to provide the support that you asked for us to provide in helping you as a veteran fashion your success. Um, and so I am honored to be part of the ceremony today uh, and I thank all for the opportunity uh, that you gave to allow me to speak. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Hines. Uh, I now have the privilege of asking my good colleague, Vice President for External Relations, uh, Brigadier General Retired Steve Stevens, to come forward and to provide a few brief remarks. Now, I am not his agent. And uh, he chuckled when I told him I was going to do this, but uh, I told him that uh, we would increase his credibility by showing uh, this document here. But as uh, some of you, uh, all seriousness here, as some of you uh, are well aware, the general recently published a book uh, detailing his 30 plus year career in the U.S. Army. And we're privileged to have uh, him come forward this morning and to provide a few brief <laughs> remarks on this occasion. So, General Stevens. Thanks, Brian. Dr. Hines, <laughs> and all of you who are present, thank you so much for being here. And uh, since Brian plugged my book, you can get it in the bookstore. <laughs> I, I went in there and checked this morning to make sure I had some coffee. I do have it. Uh, we're here today to open a center for student veterans. You know, as I look back over many, many years, uh, my best college roommate was a veteran. He had served in the Air Force four years, and I was a sophomore, and he did some really crazy things, and, and I can remember him saying, okay, mate, it's time to study. Or on Saturday mornings, he would get me up and go with him downtown Charleston, West Virginia. We were at West Virginia State. And we would go and stand in the work line and, and he would say, I won't go unless you take my buddy. And so I'd make 15, 16 bucks or spend about a dollar an hour. Uh, those are back in the dark ages before you <laughs> were bored. Uh, but it was a veteran at that time. And our campus was full of veterans. And over the years, when I taught ROTC in upstate New York, we had veterans on the campus. And there are a lot of veterans here. 
And it is about time, I think, that we designate a space that they can call their own. All Americans, regardless of political persuasion or attitudes toward ongoing wars, want to express appreciation to our veterans. Now, my father-in-law, who is still alive, he's 96, and he looks better than a lot of you do today. <laughs> he's 96. He was a World War II veteran, a sailor. And I, every time I see him, I, uh, I try and take him some memento from the American Legion or something to remind him of his days when he was a veteran. Nowadays, on Veterans Day, and the president just leaned over to me, I jokingly say to him that the week of November 11 is really general week. Everybody wants a general to come and speak, and so you just kind of have to line it up and go out there. They don't pass anything. They just, they just want you to come and talk. Uh, occasionally, they want you to put on a uniform, so you suck it up and, and put on a uniform. But Golden Corral and other uh, establishments around uh, give veterans a free meal. And, and that's about it, you know. And so I say a, a free meal is not enough. We should work all year long to take care of our veterans. The first thing that we should do is ensure that our Congress gives full concurrent receipt so that disabled veterans, especially those wounded in combat, get prompt and effective, and effective medical care. Now, a lot of you in that audience probably don't, don't understand what I'm talking about. Disabled pay comes in two, at least two forms. And so I get a check uh, for being disabled from which the, the, it's deducted from my retired pay. And so, I won't tell you how much it is, but whatever I get, I pay myself is the way I look at it. And I, that doesn't, for some reason, that doesn't ring like I'm getting a benefit. I also have an artificial hip. The doctors say I most likely got it from a gunshot wound in Agent Orange in Vietnam a long, long time ago. Yet the VA took decades to recognize Agent Orange as a producer of cancer and other things in soldiers. Over 130,000 soldiers from the first Gulf War are disabled, and tens of thousands more were exposed in Iraq and continue to be exposed in Afghanistan. Our veterans do not deserve red tape, foot dragging, and buck passing. They deserve to get prompt, high-quality medical care at no expense to them or their families. And we must see that those who risk their lives for our freedom are acknowledged and indeed honored, not swept under the rug. We must see that those who survive and return home, prone to domestic violence, divorce, suicide, get the help and counseling they need to re-enter the civilian world. Personally, I believe the best thing our government can do for our combat veterans is to stop making combat veterans. When we came back from Vietnam, some of us were spat upon and called baby killers. Thank God that didn't happen to me or I may not be here with you today. The people in the peace movements have finally learned to distinguish between brave young men and women, women risking their lives in foreign lands and the chicken hawk politics politicians who send them there. Today, all of us are united in respecting and honoring our veterans, and that brings me to thanking Clayton State University for designating a place for veterans attending college right here on this campus that they can call their own. This is a great start for our student veterans. While I was planning these few words, I came up on a poem that I'd like to share with you. The title is, It is the Veteran. It is the veteran, not the minister, who gave us the freedom of religion. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who gave us freedom 
of the press. It is the veteran, not the poet, who has given us the freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the campus agitator, who has given us freedom to protest. It is the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn the flag. Fellow veterans, and I know there are some in this audience, I salute you for your service and thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope that the student veterans enjoy this place. Take care of it and keep it clean and treat it like they did their personal spaces when they're on active duty. And if they see somebody abusing it, I know you thought I was going to recommend a blanket party. <laughs> <laughs> no, just stop them and remind them that the space is dedicated to those who took a solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States to obey the orders of senior officers and the president according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Student veterans are special. At least Clayton State University thinks they're special. I thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak this morning. Let's give the general another round of applause for those remarks. Here at Clayton State University, we are committed to active learning and student success. This morning, it is my honor to ask one of our students, Edwin Stark, Student Veteran Association President and a war veteran, to come forward and provide us with a few comments relating to the significance of the opening of the Veterans Resource Center here at Clayton State University. Let's give Edwin a round of applause as he comes forward. Well, it's certainly not every day that uh, I get to follow a university president and a general officer at the podium. They were probably equal, equally as nervous to follow a first order. But today is indeed an awesome day. Once again, we rose this morning in celebration. Citizens of this great nation rose to celebrate the freedoms and liberties provided by our most honored citizens and warriors, veterans of American Armed Forces. Let us be clear, we are all able to pursue goals of higher education and a quest of life's goals because of the brave men and women who've answered the call of duty when America needed its most dedicated servant. The student veteran who decides to return to, to school faces many hurdles. The student veteran returns to colleges and universities realizing that the world has changed because of his or her service. We are older, we have more responsibilities and more concerns than the traditional student. From the beginning, some student veterans may be challenged in understanding how higher education works and how to traverse across a university campus. We set foot on campus full of questions, not sure who to ask. No one here is in uniform. There is no first sergeant and no commanding officer. We want and need to know what programs are available and who to ask for help. Where do I go? Part of those questions can be answered here in our Veterans Resource Center. Having a Veterans Resource Center will facilitate the flow of information to each and every veteran and family member. Having a Veterans Resource Center will provide us a one-stop shop where veterans can get all questions answered or at least pointed in the right direction. 
The Veterans Resource Center will provide veterans a safe haven or exclusive place we can freely speak our vernacular without the strange looks. We ask questions like, check or hold. Give commands like, lean forward in your foxhole. Sometimes we just say, who? Oh. <laughs> the VRC will provide a place where I, as Student Veterans Association president, can provide counsel and support to fellow veterans who may hear a door slam and mentally escape back to the battlefield that perhaps captured the life of a fellow comrade. To the many student veterans and veteran faculty and staff members here at Clayton State, please know this. The mission of supporting America's veterans never ends. 